So we are about to start the Q and research process. And just before we start, I wanted to go back and reiterate on the types of keywords that you should know about. I'll do this by giving an example. So let's say uh, someone is looking for laptops. The person goes on Google and types buy laptops online. So the keyword there is buy laptops online. That's the keyword phrase. Just from this keyword phrase, you already know that the person wants to buy laptops online. Now this keyword, we can say it has a very, very high buyer intent because the person really wants to buy the la a laptop and they're looking to buy it online. That's why they've typed buy laptops online. That's one type of keyword that we have. So let's look at a different keyword. Let's say someone goes on Google and types HP Elite Book 840 review. So from this keyword, you already know that the person is looking for an HP Elite Book 840 laptop and they are looking for a review of that laptop. This keyword is what we can call a high buyer intent. We know that this person is looking for a review of this product and if they read the review of the product and find that uh, it's, it's good, perhaps it fits their budget, uh, perhaps the laptop has the specifications that they need, then they are probably going to buy. So finally, someone goes on Google and types uh, history of HP laptops. So just from the keyword, you already know that this person is not looking to buy anything. They're just looking for information like how did HP begin or maybe when were HP laptops first made or things like that. So when doing keyword research, you want to be very conscious of the intent of the person who's typing the keyword. You want ideally to go for people who have a high buyer intent. That means people who are looking for best kind of products or people who are looking for reviews or people who are looking for comparison. Let's say someone is comparing Samsung Galaxy G7 versus iPhone what what, so something like that. So when people are doing some comparison, they probably are looking to buy but haven't made up their mind which product to buy. So when you write a review, you can review the two products, compare them head to head, and then tell the person, uh, I recommend this product because of a, B, C, D, or I do not recommend this product because of this and this and this. So knowing the intent of the person who's typing the keyword is very crucial when doing keyword research. Now let's hop over to the computer and start doing some real keyword research. For this session, we're going to use the example of vacuum cleaners. If you've already done your niche research, you probably have a list of products that uh, you, you want to build your site around. To do keyword research, simply go on Google and type the name of the product on Google. So let's say uh, we, we've decided we are looking to build a neat site around vacuum cleaners. So I'll just go on Google and type best vacuum cleaners. Then click search. So there we go. Now, just from typing in the best vacuum cleaners, we can start seeing some many, many keyword ideas about vacuum cleaners that revolve around vacuum cleaners. For instance, if you hover here to the right, you can see we have a keyword called best vacuum cleaner for carpets. And you can see the monthly search volume is 3,600. Then we have best vacuum cleaners for pet hair. The monthly search volume is 2,900. Best vacuum cleaner for home, 1,600 and so many other keywords. You can even further go down and look at people also search some more keywords that are related to the best vacuum cleaners as well as their monthly search volumes. The best vacuum cleaners gets about 50,000 searches per month and then all these other keywords you can see how many searches they are getting per month. Now if you're wondering where I'm getting these search volumes you just need a handy Chrome extension called what is my SRP? What is my SRP? Just type what is my SAP on Google. Then the first result, what what's my SAP.com? It's a Chrome extension that's free. Just sign up for free. Then install the Chrome extension, and then you'll be able to see this 
uh, related keywords of the main keyword that you've typed. After installing the Chrome extension, you can decide to change the country so that you can see the results of people in particular countries. So let's say if I was building a niche site targeting people in the UK, I'll just click this flag over here. Then I'll just write United Kingdom. And when you do that, you can now see the search volume of people in the United Kingdom. Remember the best vacuum cleaners in the US, it was getting 50,000 searches, but we can see in the UK, it's getting 18,000 searches, which is still a lot of searches. So uh, if you're building an insight for targeting a particular country, just make sure you change the flag to whichever country you are targeting. But for now, we'll just remain in the United States because we're building an insight that is targeting people in the United States. So again, the website is what's my S what's my SAP or what's my serp.com just check the link in the description for the website uh, sign up it's free install the chrome extension and then when you enable it you can be able to get uh, these results of the keywords so back to the keyword results so we've seen best vacuum cleaners is 50,000 and we've seen a bunch of other related keywords so right now what you should be doing you should be writing these keywords in an Excel sheet. Uh, basically, write the keyword plus the search volume and make a whole list of them because these are the keywords that you're going to write articles about in case you decide to enter this niche. Apart from just looking at these results, you can now click any of these other results on the side to get even further key or keyword ideas. So let's say, let's click Best Vacuum Cleaner for Carpet. When you click that, we're going to get some new keyword ideas based on this keyword that we've now selected. Now we can see some new keywords. We have now best vacuum cleaner for home, best lightweight vacuum cleaner for elderly, best vacuum cleaner for carpet and hardwood, best vacuum cleaner for carpet and pet hair, and so on. So all these keywords, plus their monthly searches, you add them to your Excel sheet. And we have a handy Excel sheet for you. There is the Excel sheet. You can find it in the description section. So you just come and fill it with all the keywords that you are gathering during your research. So we can see uh, best vacuum cleaner for carpet. Just write best vac vacuum cleaner for carpet. The search volume, you can see it's 3,600. Commercial intent, basically that means are people looking to buy something when they type this keyword? So the answer can either be yes or no. So the answer is yes over here. Seasonal, of course, I just know from my own research that people are always looking for vacuum cleaners all year round. This is not something that is only used during a specific uh, time of the year. So seasonal, I'll say it's no. And basically that's that. So we just continue filling this Excel sheet with more keywords that we come across. So I'll check some more keywords from this side. Just go for the keywords that make sense. So for instance, we have best vacuum cleaner for home. Vacuum cleaner for home. You can see the monthly search volume is 1600 over there. Commercial intent, of course, it's yes. That, that means that's a person who's looking to buy a vacuum cleaner for their home. Of course, it's not seasonal. Then we go again, uh, best vacuum cleaner, best lightweight, sorry, best lightweight vacuum cleaner for elderly. Search volume is 390. Commercial intent, yes, seasonal, no. And then you just go and fill as many keywords as possible. So. Anytime you found some keywords over here and you want to continue building your keyword list, just click on any of the keywords. For instance, you could click best vacuum cleaner for carpet and hardwood. When you click on that keyword, then we're going to get even more suggestions of the keywords to go after. So this is just keyword research is really a never ending process. But ideally, you want to have about around 100 keywords just to start because we haven't decided to settle on this niche. We still have to figure out uh, the competition that will enable us to know whether we can really compete in this space or we'll just uh, be playing a losing game. So just get about 100 keywords, fill the Excel sheet with the keywords, the search volume, indicate whether the keyword is, has a commercial intent or not, 
and whether the keyword is seasonal in nature or not. So when you have like a hundred keywords, that's fine. We can go to the next step, which is simply looking at the competition. So you'll have to do this for a couple of the neat ideas that you had come up with in the previous videos. So let's say you had like about 50, 50, 50 niches. So take the products of each niche, type them on Google, check the amount of search volume that each keyword is getting, check the number of keywords that are popping up from what's my SAP, indicate the search volume, and then just fill the Excel sheet like that. So probably uh, you, you can do this uh, one niche at a time. So let's say after doing, uh, your, you've gotten your 100 keywords over here, then you can go to your next niche, then the next niche, the next niche. So you'll have around a sheet of about uh, five niche ideas or 10 niche ideas or whatever. But remember, take your time at this stage because keyword research will really determine whether you're going to be successful with your niche site. Do it in a hurriedly way and get it wrong and you'll probably struggle to make money. So just take your time. Uh, take even, a, even one week to do just keyword research because once you're done with keyword research, then things become easier. Like keyword research is the hardest part of building a niche site. But once you get the keyword research locked down and you've gotten the right keywords, then making money becomes quite, quite easier. So fill the Excel sheet. Fill the Excel sheet with the keywords, search volume, commercial intent, and seasonal, whether it's seasonal in nature. And from there, you're good to go. That's how you do keyword research. But now, we have to evaluate the competition. So assuming we've decided to build a niche site around vacuum cleaners, let's look at the competition and find out whether we can really compete in the space or whether we'll be wasting our time building a niche site around vacuum cleaners. I'll see you in the next video.